Welcome to this Sunday's service from the Witch at Vale. Today we're back in Dinton Church. And it's great to welcome you if you are listening on Red Kite Radio and if you're watching on our YouTube channel. My name is Phil Groves and uh, I'm one of the clergy in the team around here. I want to welcome you to worship God, to hear from his word and to pray and to pray for the world around us in particular. So let us open with worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We open our worship with one of the great hymns of praise. Crown him with many crowns. Before we listen to the word of God and I try and explain what I think I understand about what's being said in the Bible, let's just uh, pause for a moment. Think about the things that we have done that we may be ashamed of and know that God forgives us. Jesus said when he came, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So let us turn away now and confess our sins to Christ in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. 
wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you know the Father of all mercies will cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image and will do this to the praise and glory of his name. Amen. So through this year we have been following the Gospel of Mark and we come now to Mark chapter 10 and if you have a Bible at home you may want to follow this reading uh, as we're going through it. And we're looking at Mark chapter 10 verses 2 to 16. Now this is uh, an interesting little uh, section, it combines two little dialogues that Jesus has, uh, first of all with some Pharisees. Uh, Pharisees would have been teachers of the law, people who followed the law very, um, very rigorously, uh, people who were concerned for getting things right by the letter of that law and following that with uh, dedication. The second section uh, is with his own followers. In the first section he's going to discuss divorce and the second section little children. The first time I preached on this in church, I had this little section, exactly this section, was back when I was a curate in Leeds. And where I was a curate, we were in an inner city parish and we had a buzzing congregation. Uh, it was very exciting to be there. We could get uh, 50 or 60 adults on a Sunday and sometimes we'd get 40, even 50 children. Sometimes children outnumbered adults in our service. And so when, I had a, uh, uh, when we had uh, this reading, they had always had the preacher preach about the section which we're going to come to, which is on the little children. When I looked out into that congregation, and I knew that congregation intimately, I knew that every single adult in that congregation was either divorced, divorced and remarried, their partner was, had been previously married before they, uh, they were married to them, their children perhaps were divorced, or their parents were divorced. Divorce had affected every single one person listening. And nobody had ever preached on the section on divorce. And here was I, a young curate, recently married with no real experience. And when I it was clear that I was going to preach on that bit, people took a deep intake of breath sat bolt upright and expected to be offended. I'm going to read the passage to you and see what you make of it, think about it, and then I'll just tell you a little bit of what I said, and I still think all these years later. So some Pharisees came and they wanted to test Jesus, and they asked, it, asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about these matters, and he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. So then people were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, 
Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such of these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them in his arms and he laid his hands on them and blessed them. Now, of course, at first sight, these two readings seem very, sim dis you know, they seem completely disparate stories. But actually what is at their heart is not about either how we treat children or how we understand marriage, but who is welcome in the kingdom of God. And for the Pharisees, it was those who followed by the letter, the law that is given. But to Jesus, it is to the little children that show us the example for them coming to trust in God. So when I stood up to preach about marriage, you can see that there was some shuddering. Uh, Jesus is challenging the Pharisees because uh, they are doing things by the letter of the law. And yet uh, he wants to command them to go a bit deeper. And, uh, and, and, and this certificate of dismissal can be written and any man can divorce any woman just like that with no grounds for divorce, no need to offer any reason, the woman can be thrown out. And of course, when she's thrown out of that community space, it isn't just that she's no longer married, she doesn't have home, she doesn't have fields, she doesn't have a way of supporting herself and possibly her children as well. For there are men in the history of the world and there are men today who do not care even about their own children and just dismiss them. And if they starve, they starve. And so this is a really serious question. But the Pharisees are not asking a serious question to, uh, because they want to know a pastoral answer, a kind answer, a loving answer. They want to know the answer because they want to trick Jesus. They want to prove that he is logically wrong. So Jesus calls upon a backward step, not just what's written in the hearts, but what's written in the law. And he said, God made them male and female. And this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Now, there are kind of questions of, um, of, on marriage of, of male and female. And within our churches next year, we're beginning to ask some questions about what this means in the context of how we know that there are gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, trans, intersexed people who live within our communities. And we're beginning to ask what these kind of mean for us in that context. But I want to ask, just leave you with it, just get you to think about this. A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. What he is saying is, this joining is something that is really um, fundamental. That the key relationship ceases between the son and the parents and becomes between the woman and the man. In mutuality and equality. Somebody asked me about biblical marriage. What is biblical marriage? And in our churches, we have come to a very cultural understanding that the bride is given away by the father and given, into, uh, into, given to the husband. But the Bible actually says that the man shall leave his mother and father. We've kind of got it wrong. We ought to be having a wedding service where we ritualise, where we have a moment where the man says goodbye to his mother and father to be joined with the woman. We kind of got it the wrong way around. And this is really important because for donkey's years, we've seen women as possessions. And that is not what it says in the Bible. And so what Jesus is saying to the Pharisees is, 
This is not, uh, the, the wife is not just another possession. And the man can say, I no longer own this woman. There's the legal document done. She can now go. Marriage is about mutuality. It is about being joined together, joined in one flesh, joined in a bond that is so important that God has joined it together and should not be set apart. Well, the disciples know this is really hard. This is really hard because uh, what happens when these marriages break up? And we know that and it is awful and we cry about it. And we do know that that happens and that there needs to be accommodation and we need to know that that is something that still happens today. But Jesus says something even more remarkable. Whoever divorces his wife and commits adultery against her. That is about the man committing a sin against the woman because he's set her aside. But he then says... If a woman divorces her husband, well, that couldn't happen. That couldn't happen in the law. So what he's now talking about is equality. This is a Me Too movement. This is a moment of equality between women and men. That the woman does this also. She is breaking some bond that is fundamental. Of course, the question is, when it, where is that bond broken? Is it bond broken in the signing of a document or in the, the relationship that breaks down. So as a, as a priest of many years, I often find couples coming to me and saying, we'd like to get married, but one of us was, or both of us, was previously in a marriage and we want to talk that through with you. And we look into what are the kind of things that, uh, that we've managed to learn from that first event. Is there a commitment for this new marriage to be everlasting and ever strong? And it is not anything to do with what is written down. It is not anything to do with a, a legal document. It is entirely in the heart. There are decision-making processes I felt pushed into do, getting married. I felt that this was the, the greatest thing, but then I was deceived by my partner. All kinds of things that come out. And we realise that we are not perfect. And Jesus realises that, and that there is forgiveness and a way forward. What Jesus is really talking about here is not that marriage is incapable of being dissolved. What he's saying is that we need to enter into all the things we do with a commitment of love and hope for the future. And that these bonds go beyond a legal document. They are in our heart. And so if you want to follow just the law, you're going to be in trouble and so when the people bring the little children along for him to touch so that they know that they're incorporated, they're part of the kingdom of God, the disciples push the children away and say, get out. And Jesus says, no, let those children come to me. Do not stop them because this, these are for whom the kingdom of God belongs. They are not interested in law. They're interested in relationship who cares for them, who loves them, where their heart is. And so the gospel, the good news, is that we receive the kingdom of God as little children. We are received into his arms. We have new life and new hope. And so let us pray. Let us pray today for marriages and for families. Father, we come today to just rejoice in the way that you can, you've given us the ability to love one another. We pray for those who have recently been married and those who have been married for donkey's years. We pray for those who are contemplating marriage. Father, we pray that that commitment be in their heart, that when people get married, they join together truly in mutuality and respect and commitment that is permanent and faithful and stable. 
Father, we pray for those whose marriages have been blown apart, perhaps by the action of one partner, perhaps through illness, bereavement. We pray for those who have struggled because their marriage has not ended as they would have wished it to. Father, I pray for them. Pray for people who need counselling help for those who are struggling. And most of all, Lord, we pray for those who have found that their marriage has become violent and they are victims of domestic abuse. We pray for the shelter in uh, Aylesbury, the women's centre. We pray for the children where domestic abuse has been part of their reality. We pray for a change of heart. Lord, we know that there is a better way. And we know this because we know that you welcome all people as if we were little children. Father, we give you thanks for your care for all. So Lord, send us into the world, committed to love, committed to faithfulness, and committed to supporting families in difficult times. And we say what is often called the family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.